Hey everyone, my name is Alex. I've uh, been with Slalom Consulting for the last four years. Um, and over the last three years, actually, I've been lucky enough to work with uh, Lurie Children's Camp Urban Explorers program. Uh, so this is a program that the hospital puts on for all of their patients there throughout the summer um, to really bring that camp experience alive in the hospital. Uh, it's been a little different this year because typically we're able to go in person and really actually work with the patients and do these activities with them. But um, obviously we couldn't because of quarantine. So wanted to give a quick call into our fearless camp leaders, Scott and Katie, and see how camp's been going this year. Hey, Scott and Katie, how's it going, guys? Hey, Alex, how are you? It's been so long since we've seen you, but it's good to hear your voice. Absolutely. Yeah, good to see you guys. I've been really looking forward to checking and see how camp's been going. How's everything been? You know, it's been an interesting summer, but so much fun. We've been mm -hmm. having a great, a great time. That's awesome. So I'm actually going live with um, our slalom crew here, and I would love if you could both take a chance and quickly introduce yourselves and um, what you do at Lurie Children's and uh, what to expect from summer camp. Okay, cool. Well, I'm Scott, and this is Katie, and we, our role here at the hospital, are school service coordinators, which means we are school teachers here in the hospital, and our role is to help educate students and continue their instruction while they're away from their home schools. But during the summer, it's a little bit quieter here. So we've launched Camp Urban Explorers, which is a summer camp experience that we bring to the patients to recreate what it would be like if they weren't here. They would be going to camp and participating in all these different fun activities. And we work with students kindergarten all the way up through senior year in high school. That's during the regular school year and during Camp Urban Explorers. So we certainly have our work cut out for us to make sure that all of our camp themes and the camp activities are appealing and inclusive to all of those ages and all of those interest levels as well. That's incredible. I, I love to hear that, you know, Larry's put that on for the patients. Could you tell me a little bit about um, the overall goal of the camp and the impact you've seen it have on some of the patients that you've worked with? Definitely. So the goal of camp is really just to mimic um, and actually recreate an entirely authentic camp experience. So you can see we're both in our Camp Urban Explorers t-shirts. We've got our, um, you know, Daniel Boone hats on, our bandanas. So we really try and make it feel like we're actually camp counselors and we're here to connect and have a really great time doing a lot of hands-on immersive activities with our students, just to make sure that they're still enjoying their summer and mm -hmm. still getting to you know, have that imagination and learning happening in a really fun way. That's amazing. And I see it looks like you're both set up in your classroom and I'm used to uh, the kids all running around, having fun with all the different activities, but I can't help but notice it seems pretty quiet there. So this year it's a little bit different um, due to the pandemic that's going on where students aren't allowed and campers aren't allowed to come down here to our classroom slash cabin. So everything that we do has had to go bedside. Um, so we visit each individual cabin of our patients and do the activities with them bedside, one-on-one. -on -one. But you're right, in the past, we used to have our classroom space, which we're in right now, open and the students would come down. And what was really cool was it was open to their siblings also so mm -hmm. that they could have that time with their brothers and sisters and have that socialization piece. That's so cool. I love that you not only found a way to bring such an amazing camp experience to the patients, but also found ways to work in their siblings and you know their other family members that are there with them. That's, that's such a cool experience. Um, so, I know all I've been doing during quarantine has really been sitting on my couch watching some TV, but as I'm looking <laughs> through the pictures that you all have sent, I've, I've seen the kids running around playing with dinos, building flashlights, and even participating in the Olympics. How would you bring that magic to life this year? Well, so like every year, uh, summer camp spans eight weeks, and each week is a different theme, um, so we can really immerse and let those kids explore that certain topic. And so this week, we are this year we had camp kickoff. We had a garden week, we had a prehistoric party week, we had a STEM week, which Slalom sponsored, along with camp kickoff and our final week, which was the Olympic week as well. And then we had a week seven, which was going to be um, a, a talent show week, but because of COVID, and we weren't allowed to have kids come down to the space to actually perform their talents and record them due to like HIPAA concerns and things like that. So we decided to do sort of a catch-all because so many uh, activities from the previous weeks were such a big hit that we carried them over to that week, that seventh week to do like a kind of a catch all So we redid the DIY flashlights. We did the STEM challenge. We did some pet rocks again. So it was a big hit. 
And it was really cool because um, we normally will partner with a lot mm -hmm. of different community organizations to enhance camp. So in the past, we've had the Shed Aquarium come and bring the animals. Um, we've had the Smart Museum come to do flower crowns. Uh, and this year, obviously, we cannot have any visitors in the hospital. We can't have any patients down. So we still wanted to include those community sponsors. So we just had to get a little creative. Um, so during our prehistoric party week, we actually partnered with the University of Chicago Fossil Lab, and they put on an amazing uh, virtual tour for us of their entire fossil lab. So we got to see T-Rex bones that they excavated from Wyoming. We got to see a super croc tooth that was like, honestly, the size of my head. It was really cool. And this video really just opened up the students' imagination. And especially for a lot of our teen students, it was cool because they were like, wait, I didn't, I thought that was just like Jurassic Park kind of stuff. Like this is actually a job that you can have. So it was really neat to see that kind of segue into, oh yeah, these are real life skills and opportunities that you can seek out in the future, which was fun. So I know everyone from the Slums has been bummed that we couldn't be there with you this year um, as we have been in the past, but um, could you show us a bit more about uh, what these activity packs might look like and how you've been going bedside into the actual patient's rooms and a bit of what that process looked like? Yeah, and I have to say that we are seriously bummed that you aren't here helping out as well because that's one of our highlights is to allow you to come in and see the space and to interact with the, the campers and the students as well because mm -hmm. it's a highlight for them, it's a highlight for you, and it really makes it feel like a social uh, fun time. And the so, energy you all bring yes. is always just the best. This classroom lights up when Slalom is here, but your spirit has definitely still been definitely. here with us. And yeah, packing the activity packs has been um, certainly something that Scott and I have tried to make mm -hmm. a fun experience for <laughs> ourselves. Um, but yeah, we have yeah. these big Camp Urban Explorers bags that we take around. So again, with our camp theme, the plaid, and then within each bag, we um, make individual packets that the activities are in. So we obviously, anytime we're going bedside, we have to be very, um, you know, ensure that we're making um, everything individual. So we're not bringing multiple things into multiple rooms just to make sure we're having the safest and cleanest environment for our students. So in here we have um, everything individually packed. And then because of that, this year we made actually, we called them menu sheets. So they look like this with each week's themed activities on them. And so what we would do is we would bring those into the room. Since we couldn't bring all the supplies and activities into the rooms, we would show the menu sheet to the patient or the student and talk about the theme of the week and what these activities are. And we would let the student actually sort of pick which activity they wanted to do. They could do all the activities, they could do just one activity, but the problem is we can't bring them all in and then reuse them if they don't. So we would start with one or two, bring those into the, uh, to the room with the patient, and then we would complete those activities. And if they wanted to do some more, we'd go out and get more. So what I'm thinking is it looks like there's at least four activities or so on that sheet. And you were not, A, not only spending your whole day in the class or in the rooms with the kids, but did you all individually pack, you know, 50 or so uh, packs for those activities on your own? We did. Yes. <laughs> we had the help of our education liaison. So sure. um, that was very helpful. They are also um, part of the education team here at the hospital and each of them helped us out for a day mm -hmm. of camp. And so, yeah, it was, it was a big undertaking. Um, Scott and I became very close uh, during all of that packing and organizing, um, but we made it through and yeah. we're here to tell the tale. So, um, you know, it was fun though, because we really had to think through like, okay, what are, what is everything that will be needed for this project now? What about, you know, glue or mm -hmm. those types of things where, you know, maybe we won't bring in an individual glue to every room. So what's that cleaning process going to look like between each room? So there is a lot of uh, strategy behind it, but it was fun. It really gave us kind of a challenge to think through of, okay, how are we still going to make this work and make it work really well in the safest way possible? We definitely had to think outside of the box, especially like planning some of these activities of what we could take into the rooms 
and what we couldn't take in the rooms. And especially the weeks where we normally partner with organizations like the Shedd Aquarium, um, when they usually bring penguins and baby shark and jellyfish. So since they weren't coming, what were we going to do to represent the animals? So we had to like get creative and think about what resources we had here. So it was definitely a more challenging year, but I think definitely more rewarding in the sense that we were still able to go bedside um, and engage these students along with their families during this time where visitors aren't really allowed right now. So it really gave them something to look forward to each week. That's amazing. It's incredible that you both had the time to not only plan the activities, get the supplies, pack them up, then bring them in the classroom and then also figure out for those activities that you couldn't do, how are you gonna, you know, still enhance that experience and really bring that option to the kids? I can't mm -hmm. imagine when either of you ever slept this past summer, but <laughs> I'm amazed to see the dedication. I, I know the students all absolutely love that. Um, so I guess one other question, uh, what have been some of your favorite activities this, um, throughout these last eight weeks? You know, it's so hard to choose because there were so many amazing activities and slalom every year blows our mind with what you all come up with. Um, and it's really fun when Scott and I kind of sit down and look through your initial ideas. Mm -hmm. We get to, you know, oh my goodness, I never thought that we could do that. And then it's like such a huge hit. So it's really fun to see what you come up with. And uh, one of the camp kickoff activities that you all provided that was my personal favorite was actually the pet rock. So um, at first I was like, oh, interesting, a pet rock. Okay, you know, maybe kids will take it or leave it. Um, but I actually ended up working with a bunch of teenagers during week one. And I thought for sure they would say no to the pet rock, you know, that's too young for them or whatever. And lo and behold, I had multiple teenagers who spent like hours on their pet rock. And I, you know, I was doing one alongside them. This is my favorite one that I created. But you know, it's just kind of something where it was surprising that the teens really took to this activity. But I think, again, it speaks to that true camp experience where, you know, we're doing it together. It's not something that they would probably pick up and do at their own home. But the fact that we're kind of talking about it and like, huh, how, what else could I add to this to make it look really cute? We really got into it. And I think that bond, in addition to creating something like fun and goofy, was the best part for me, for sure. Mm -hmm. Totally. That's amazing that you got them excited about something that probably seemed so silly to them and ended up, you know, having something by their bedside probably the rest of the time they've been there. That's a really cool art project to look at. My favorite activity out of all of camp is one that Slalom sent us, which, well, is two, and they're both from STEM week. It's the engineering challenge because it's so simple. It is a set of what, 10 blocks or eight blocks, 10 cups, and like six popsicle sticks. And like, it's one of those activities, kind of like the pet rock where kids are like, oh, it's blocks and sticks. Like, Nah, uh, come on. Yeah. But once we open it up and we engage them and we challenge like, okay, who can build the higher structure? And they're like trying to get it so high and then it like starts to wobble and they're like, stop, stop moving. <laughs> and then it falls over and they scream and then they're like, no, I can do it better. And so totally seeing those kids really get into it. And then after you leave the room, you hear them being like, mom, now it's your turn. I want you to try it. And so like, it was kind of the activity that just like kept giving, right? They could play it over and over again, even with their medical staff and their nurses, um, and really challenge and practice those like building skills. And in addition to that, of course, the flashlight. The DIY the flashlight. The DIY is flashlight. A huge hit. Huge hit. Like this one, I have to tell you, you get to the final step and you slide in the battery. And I always tell kids this is the moment of truth. Is it going to work? Do you think this is going to work? Right? And they put it in and then it doesn't work because they have the battery upside down. And so then I'm like, well, let's try switching the battery. And so we switch the battery and then it lights up and their eyes and their face like light up just as bright. It's and incredible. they get so excited and they want to show everybody. And then they're like, wow, I can make, an can I make another one? Can I make another one? And we had different colored lights. And so some kid made a red one, a blue one, a pink one, a purple <laughs> one, like they just went to town. But then at the same time, they were learning a lot about science and technology. So it was a great learning experience. That's so cool. I love it. I, this is sounds like such a great experience all summer. I'm amazed that you were able to pull this together, you know, last minute changes, pivoting to this virtual environment, but um, it sounds like it's been just as uh, successful as ever. So that's fantastic. Um, it's been really so fun. Much. Mm -hmm. This is awesome to get to talk to you both and hear a little bit of how camp's going. I'm missing being there, but uh, I'm glad to hands with you both.
Yeah, we Perfect. miss you all too. And uh, we have to say the postcards that you all send really make us feel like you are still here. Makes the students feel like, uh, you know, you're here. They love the jokes. We love, love the, jokes. the jokes. So that's been uh, another highlight of how Solemn has really helped out Camp Urban Explorers this summer. Amazing. I love it. Thank you both so much. No, thank, you. thank you. Bye, Alex.